Hi everyone, this is Mrs. Bay here, and this week for First Chapter Friday, we are going to be reading Al Capone Does My Shirts, A Tale from Alcatraz. And this goes really well with the things that we've been doing in ELA class this week. So we thought that this would be a great book to look at today for First Chapter Friday. Remember, all of these books are available on Sora. So anytime you're ready to read a new book, you've finished your book and you're ready to read a new one, you can just Go to Sora and search for any of these titles that have been of interest to you. All right, here we go. Chapter 1, Devil's Island, Friday, January 4th, 1935. Today I moved to a 12-acre rock covered with cement, topped with bird turd and surrounded by water. Alcatraz sits smack in the middle of the bay. And so close to the city of San Francisco, I can hear them call the score on a baseball game on Marina Street. I'm sorry, on Marina Green. Okay, not that close, but still. I'm not the only kid who lives here. There's my sister, Natalie, except she doesn't count. And there are 23 other kids who live on the island because their dads work as guards or cooks or doctors or electricians for the prison like my dad does. Plus, there are a ton of murderers, rapists, hitmen, conmen, stick-up men, embezzlers, connivers, burglars, kidnappers, and maybe even an innocent man or two, though I doubt it. The convicts we have here are the kind other prisons don't want. I never knew prisons could be picky, but I guess they can. You get to Alcatraz by being the worst of the worst. Unless you're me. I came here because my mother said I had to. I want to be here like I want poison oak on my private parts. But apparently nobody cares because now I'm Moose Flanagan, Alcatraz Island boy. Also, my sister can go to the Esther P. Marinoff School, where kids have macaroni salad in their hair and wear their clothes inside out. And there isn't a chalkboard or a book in sight. Not that I've ever been to the Esther P. Marinoff, but all of Natalie's schools are like this. I peek out the front window of our new apartment and look up to see a little glass room lit bright in the dark. This is the dock guard tower, a, pop car, a popcorn stand on stilts, where somebody's dad sits with enough firepower to blow us all to smithereens. The only guns on the island are up high in the towers or in the catwalks because one flick of the wrist and a gun carried by a guard is a gun carried by a criminal. The keys to all the boats are kept up for the same reason. They even have a crapper in each tower so the guards don't have to come down to take a leak. Besides the guard tower, there's water all around, black and shiny like tar. A full moon cuts a white path across the bay while, wind, while the wind blows, making something creak and a buoy clang in the distance. My dad is out there, too. He has guard duty in another tower somewhere on the island. My dad's an electrician, for Pete's sake. What's he doing playing prison guard? My mom is in her room unpacking and Natalie sitting on the kitchen floor, running her hands through her button box. She knows more about those buttons than it seems possible to know. If I hide one behind my back, she can take one look at her box and name the exact button I have. Nat, you okay? I sit down on the floor next to her. Moose and Natalie go on a train. Moose and Natalie eat meatloaf sandwiches. Moose and Natalie look out the window. Yeah, we all did that. And now we're here with some swell fellows like Al Capone and Machine Gun Kelly, Natalie Flanagan's whole family. Well, I wouldn't exactly say their family, more like next door neighbors, I guess. Moose and Natalie go to school, she says. Yup, but not the same school, remember? You're going to this nice place called Esther P. Marinoff. I try to sound sincere. Nice place, she repeats, stacking one button on top of another. I've never been good at fooling Natalie. She knows me too well. When I was five, I was kind of a runt. Smallest kid of all my cousins, shortest kid in my kindergarten class, and on my block, too. Back then, people called me by my real name, Matthew. 
Natalie was the first to call me Moose. I swear I started growing to fit the name that very day. Now I'm five foot eleven and a half inches and as tall as my mom and two good inches taller than my dad. My father tells people I've grown so much. He's going to put my supper into pickle jars and sell it under the name Incredible Growth Formula. I think about going in my room now, but it smells like the inside of an old lunch bag in there. My bed's a squeaky old army cot. When I sit down, it sounds like dozens of mice are dying an ugly death. There's no phonograph in this apartment, no washing machine, no phone. There's a radio cabinet, and but someone yanked the workings out. Who gutted the radio anyway? They don't let criminals in here, do they? So I'm a little jumpy, but anybody would be. Even the silence here is strange. It's quiet like something you can't hear is happening. I think about telling my best friend Pete about this place. It's the Devil's Island. Do, 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 Pete would say in a deep, spooky voice like they do on the radio. Devil's Island, do, do, do. I whisper just like Pete. But without him, it doesn't seem funny. Not funny at all. Okay, that's it. I'm sleeping with my clothes on. Who wants to face a convicted felon in your pajamas? And as chapter two starts, Aaron Boy, we begin to learn a little bit more about what life is like for this young boy and his family on the island of Alcatraz, where it is the prison for the worst of the worst. <laughs> 